What's up, ladies and gents, boys and girls, your boys back. Giving you guys my review slash recap of the 2015 NBA playoffs and my review of the Eastern and Western Conference Finals. Now, I just want to say a couple things before I really kick the video off. First thing I want to say is I meant to do a round-by-round -round prediction for every team, but I never really got around to it because, one, I was too lazy, and, two, I didn't really keep up with the Eastern Conference that much, man, because, come on. Any team with LeBron James on is pretty much going to be a run-through. But the teams that surprised me so far are, well, the team that surprised me so far is um, the Atlanta Hawks. And when was the last time that the Atlanta Hawks went anywhere in the postseason in the NBA? Ever. So they really did surprise me. But they stepped up. They have a pretty good system. It's been working for them. But we'll just see how it works against the, um, against the Cleveland Cavaliers. But I'll get to the prediction in a minute. Now, the Western Conference... The Western Conference is very, very exciting because you never, I mean, because it's so many different styles in the West Coast that is really, it's unpredictable. Now, the team that I predicted to go the furthest in the West Coast was, of course, the Golden State Warriors. I predicted them to pretty much sweep everybody, but yeah. Now, one of the teams that I, I wanted to be like the the upcoming underdog was, you know, to beat one of the favorite teams. I, I predicted um that the uh, Rockets were going to lose to the, um, the Dallas Mavericks. I thought the Mavericks were going to create the same match they did back in 2011, but it didn't pan out that way. And the Rockets are no slouch of a team. But once again, I'll get to them later. Now, the one team that did surprise me, however, was the Los Angeles. The Los Angeles Clippers really did surprise me, and they earned it. And wow, all I got to say about that is wow. I think even Chris Paul cried in the game, in a, in a post game interview. I mean, when you beat a team, like, when you beat the world champions, then, yeah, you deserve all the credibility in the world. But, I, they fell short. And you guys know why they fell short. You beat the champs only to lose to the Rockets. But the Rockets are no slouch. I mean, like, Rocket fans, if you're watching this video, don't bite my head off in the comments. I'm just saying. If you are one game away from going to the Eastern Conference Finals and you blow a 10-point lead in Game 6 with two minutes left, knowing that you go up against a dangerous Rockets team in Game 7 away, then you don't even deserve to be in the playoffs. You deserve to lose. You don't even deserve to be in the NBA Finals. And, of course, Chris Paul took all the hits. But Chris Paul, that he don't he don't even deserve all the bullshit he got for because they probably have one of the best systems in the NBA as far as the offense goes. I mean, come on. And Chris Paul pretty much throughout the first round of the playoffs, the first round and a half of the playoffs, he pretty much carried the team on his back while DeAndre Jordan was jacking up shots. He wasn't making plays, defensive plays when they needed to be made, and when Blake Griffin was still hurt. So Chris Paul gets all the credit in the world, and people are gonna be, see, people are still gonna bash him and shit on him just because he hasn't been to a um, NBA championship game and doesn't have any rings yet. But uh, yeah, that's a damn shame. But we'll just see what they do next year. I mean, I'll, I'm not really a, a hardcore. I like the Clippers, and I like that's one of the teams that I like to watch. I'm not a hardcore fan, but I like to watch them. But it's just a shame how they blew the game that way. I mean, yeah, it hurts them. I mean, like I said, you beat the um, you beat the championship Spurs. But you lose to the Rockets. You see how you see how you see how messed up that sounds. But uh, yeah. Anyway, and the the Golden State Warriors they need no introduction. The Golden State Warriors they've been playing like world beaters. I mean, and Steph Curry that man is unbelievable. Somebody tell me did he have some of Captain America Super Soldier Serum? What the hell has he been taking? He's playing like a man possessed. And Klay Thompson, Klay Thompson, he kind of took a break in the last round of the playoffs. He kind of was quiet, but I believe in um in the series against the um against the Houston Rockets, he's gonna shove off. And if he can new, and if the, if um the if the Golden State Warriors can find a way to neutralize Dwight Howard's defense and try to take his rebound ability away from him, it could possibly be a run through. Now, as far as my overall prediction for the next round of the playoffs, Golden State versus the Houston Rockets. Like I said, well, I pretty much gave you guys just a quick prediction. Now, they don't really have any weaknesses. Like the Rockets are pretty good, a pretty good fundamental team. Now, I believe they have one like out of everybody else who's in the best defense. But is that going to be enough to rock with the? Um, is that going to be not enough to rock with the Gold State Warriors offense, who's playing like who play, who are playing like men possessed? Clearly. But uh, yeah, just to give, and I mean like. Who like who can you match up with Steph Curry? 
as far he's like he's probably one of the fastest guys. And like I said, besides James Harden, he's probably gonna have the best shot on that court. And I believe uh, it's four home games. I believe um, the uh, Rockets have three home games and four away games. We'll just see what they can do. Like I believe they can win the first two and they'll have a chance. But I don't really see it happening that way. Text message on my cell phone. But yeah, I see. I mean, like just to play. I have the um, I have the uh, Gold State Warriors winning this series. But just say I'm gonna say Warriors in seven. Now. The um, Atlanta Hawks versus the Cleveland Cavaliers. Love LeBron James or hate LeBron James? He's the best player in the world right now. You give him anybody, I mean, you give him any supporting cast. Hell, he can even do it without a supporting cast. But any team with LeBron James on is dangerous, especially if you got somebody like Kyrie Irving and Timothy Mozgov who's been getting rebounds. And you got, um, let's see who else you got. Um, well, you got, like I said, you got a hell of a supporting cast. I mean, even with uh, Kevin Love being hurt, I mean, they still actually managed to make a good mark. And they, like I said, they've been pretty much running through everybody in the East. Now, like I said, I like to see the underdog win, especially, um, I mean, look at who the Hawks have. I mean, they got Jeff, T a healthy Jeff Teague. They've got Kyle Korver. They've got um, Al Horford. Al Horford, that man, even though he may not be the prettiest player to watch, he makes plays when they matter. He, he's clutch, and he makes plays when they matter. And Kyle Korver, he may jack up a three-pointer or two, but when that man heats up, he's very, very dangerous. But is that going to be enough? Like I said, there's, they have their, they have a really fundamental team. They don't really have any big strengths or any really, really big advantages over anybody, but at the same time, they don't really have any weaknesses either. But is that going to be enough to beat a really, really focused Cleveland Cavaliers team who's been playing like world beaters in the East? I don't think so. So I'm going to say Cavs and six. But anyway... Tell me what you guys think. That's my prediction for the Eastern and Western Conference Finals and just pretty much recap of 2015 NBA playoffs. Let me know what you guys think. Like, comment, subscribe if you like the page. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.